Hello, my name is Misha. I'm an aircraft mechanic and welcome to my brand new channel, Moto Sky Aviation. This channel is dedicated to teaching the knowledge and skills of aircraft maintenance and related topics. Today's lesson is physics, but more specifically, we will be talking about matter, mass, weight, density, and specific gravity. So let's get started. What is matter? Matter is defined as whatever occupies space and has mass. Everything including yourself is made of matter. It's the foundation or building blocks of everything in existence. All matter is made of atoms, which are in turn made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Atoms drawn together to form molecules, which are the building blocks for all types of matters. According to the law of conservation, Matter cannot be created or destroyed. This means whatever amount of matter that is already in existence is all there is ever going to be. However, even though it cannot be created or destroyed, its physical state can change from one form to another, which means matter can exist in one of three main states, solid, liquid, and gas. There are actually five states of matter, four that are natural, solid, liquid, gas, and plasma, and one that is man-made, and it's called Bose-Einstein condensate. In this lesson, we will only focus on the first three. The first state of matter is made of closely packed particle. The forces between the particle keep the molecules from moving around freely. They can only vibrate. Therefore, a solid has a definite volume and shape. For example, a rock in a jar would not reshape itself to form to the jar. It will simply just remain in its current form. Solid will always retain its size and shape as long as there are no outside influences. For this reason, a solid is classified as incompressible. The second state of matter is made of more loosely packed particles. In this case, the forces between the particles are not very strong, causing them to move around more freely. As a result, a liquid is not definite in shape, but conforms to the shape of whatever it's held in and maintains constant volume. Even though liquid particles are free to move about, there is still some bond between the particles. That is why a liquid can maintain constant volume and also be classified as incompressible. And lastly, the third state of matter is composed of scattered particles. The particles' bonds are so weak that gas has neither a defined shape or a defined volume. For this reason, gas can only be contained if fully surrounded or held together by gravitational pull. Not only will a gas conform to the shape of whatever it's held in, it will also expand to completely fill any empty spaces. This makes gas matter highly compressible. Now that we've classified matter physical state, let's discuss some of its important characteristics. These characteristics are the true definition of matter. First two characteristics are mass and weight. Mass and weight are commonly confused together. People often use them interchangeably, but they're not the same. They're two different concepts that share a relationship. Mass is the amount of matter in a body or an object. To be even more specific, it's the amount of molecules or the amount of protons, neutrons, and electrons in something. To find the mass of an object, just simply define its weight by the acceleration of gravity. This formula can also be written as force divided by acceleration. In this case, force and weight are equal. Acceleration is a constant, which is 32.2. .2. This constant is formulated from the fact that a freely falling object is accelerated by the force of gravity 32.2 .2 feet per second each second it falls. The unit of measurement for mass is in pounds in the English system and grams or kilograms in the metric system. 
The measurement of mass is constant regardless of location. What does this mean? Let's say an aircraft tire mass was measured here on Earth, and then this same tire was taken to the moon and measured there. The mass measured on Earth would be equal to the mass measured on the moon. This result would be the same for any object or person measured anywhere in the known universe. Again, the reason for this is because location does not change an object mass. Even a change in physical state would not result in a change in mass. The only way to really change the mass of an object is to add or take away from its molecular structure. And now let's talk about weight. Weight is the amount of gravity acting on the object mass. In other words, the pull of gravity acting on the object or the size of the gravitational force experienced by an object. To find the weight of the object, multiply its mass by the acceleration of gravity. This formula is the inverse of the formula for mass. The same acceleration constant of 32.2 feet per second also applies here. The unit of measurement for weight is also in pounds in the English system and in grams or kilograms in the metric system. Unlike mass, the measurement of weight is not constant. This means that an object weight varies based on location. An object on the moon will weigh less than it does on Earth, but it will still have the same mass as we established earlier. And now, the last two sets of characteristics of matter we will be discussing are density and specific gravities. Just like how mass and weight are directly related, density and specific gravity are also directly related. You cannot talk about one without the other. The obvious reason is because their characteristics of matter. In fact, everything we've talked about so far are all related in one way or another because they all define what matter is. Let's first start off with density. What is density? Density is the degree of compactness of a substance. Remember how mass is the quantity of matter in an object? Where well, density is how close together those matters are. It is a measure of how compact or heavy a substance is in a given volume. So the more matter something has, the higher the density, and the less matter it has, the less the density. Density is measured in weight per unit volume, pound per cubic foot, or mass per unit volume, grams per milliliter. More than often, it is necessary to compare the density of one substance with that of another. For this reason, a reference standard is needed from which all other substances can be compared. Pure water with a standard temperature of 4 degrees Celsius is typically used as a reference substance when measuring the density of solids and liquids, while air with a standard temperature of 0 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 29.92 inches of mercury is used as the reference substance when measuring the density of gases. The standard pressure of 29.92 inches of mercury is the average pressure of the atmosphere at sea level. This comparison of a substance density to a reference substance density is called specific gravity. So, specific gravity is defined as the ratio of the density of a substance to the density of a reference substance. Since water is typically used as the standard, we can determine based on the substance specific gravity value if a particular substance will float or sink in water. To better understand this, let's look at the following table. This table is a list of specific gravity of various substance. As you can see, water, which is the standard for solids and liquid, has a specific gravity of 1. Looking at the rest of the table, you can see there are numbers greater than 1 and numbers less than 1. The higher the number, the higher the specific gravity, and the lower the number, the lower the specific gravity. So, if the specific gravity of a substance is less than 1, the substance will float in water, which means it has a lower density than water. And if the substance specific gravity is higher than 1, it will sink, which means it has a greater density than water. For gases, the same approach is used, but air would be the standard in this situation. Just like water, air also has a specific gravity value of 1. Remember, this is at an ideal standard temperature of 0 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 29.92 inches of mercury. So any gases less than 1 is lighter or less dense than air, and anything greater is heavier or more dense. To find the specific gravity of solids and liquids, the following formulas are used. 
So specific gravity is equal to weight of a substance over the weight of an equal volume of water, or specific gravity is equal to density of a substance over the density of water. Let's look at an example. The density of our unknown substance is 25 grams per milliliter, and the density of water is 1 gram per milliliter. The units will cancel out, gram will cancel gram, and milliliter will cancel milliliter. So our final value will be 25, because anything divided by 1 equals itself. Because the units in the numerator and the denominator are always the same, they always cancel out, which means specific gravity values are never expressed in units, but rather as pure numbers. The same formula is used for gases. More than often, it is necessary to physically measure the spatial gravity of liquids. A device called a hydrometer is typically used to determine the specific gravity of the electrolyte in a charge and discharge aircraft battery is one example of the use of this device. A hydrometer can be either a digital or a float type. A float type hydrometer consists of a specially weighted float with a graduate glass stem above the weight. The weighted flow slash graduated stem are contained in a larger glass tube. The specific gravity or density of the liquid determines the amount the float sinks or rises. Some hydrometers have a rubber suction bulb that draws the liquid up into the hydrometer. When the surface of the liquid lines up with one of the graduate on the stem of the weighted flow, then the specific gravity of the liquid can be read. That's it for this lesson. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumb up and see you in the next one.